Hello and welcome to HealthyHouseplants.com where we teach you all about gardening in the great indoors. If you'd like to support our show, please use our Amazon affiliate link below. Today I am going to tell you all about keeping Zebrina plant healthy and happy and growing great in your indoor garden. So this is Zebrina. Uh, it is also called, commonly called the wandering Jew plant, sometimes called the inch plant. I have another video on its history and how it got its name, so check that out if you want to. Right now I'm going to talk to you about how to keep these beautiful plants very happy and healthy in your indoor garden. They make nice hanging plants. As you can see, it has a hanger on here. Once they get more full and lush, this is a, a fairly young plant, so it's just now filling in, but it will eventually uh, have really nice foliage hanging down. So for hanging, for uh, high spots in your house, beautiful plant for that. Lovely foliage, uh, zebra-like foliage with the uh, nice stripe there. So, and it also makes a, uh, a nice um, uh, plant that you can work up a trellis if you want to once it gets a little bigger. So keep all, keep all those in mind or you can just you could I could take this off and just leave it and repot uh, uh, needs to be repotted if I do that uh, would repot it if I do that into a prettier pot and keep it on a table and let it spill off as spill over the the uh, pot as well so it will get flowers that are white to lavender at some point so um, that is something that you can look forward to. It, they bloom sporadically off and on throughout the year. So you just never know. It it's, it's, ends up being a very happy surprise when you, when you see them flowering. This plant does best in bright light indoors. So if you have a space that is darker and it's uh, what you wanna do, is you want to get full spectrum lighting and full spectrum bulbs come in just about every type of bulb nowadays they can be put in just about any type of fixture you want to ask for full spectrum or look for full spectrum light bulbs they simulate daylight some of the grow lights aren't full spectrum so check on that carefully so as mentioned, if you have a darker space that doesn't get a lot of light, then do use full spectrum light to give the plant enough light to keep growing lush and looking pretty for you. If you are growing in front of windows, a eastern window, a window that faces the east and is unobstructed outdoors where you don't have trees and other buildings and things, it will do really well in eastern window. You can also put it in a southern window, but put it back a couple of feet or it could get sunburned when those windows get, because southern windows during various times of the year can get pretty bright. So putting back from there. I wouldn't put this plant, this has very succulent, tender leaves. Uh, it is native to tropical areas of Mexico, southern Mexico and Guatemala. So it's not going to go for a Western exposure, especially if you're in an area such as the Southwest or I'm in California, Southern California, we get way too hot in our Western windows for this guy. So keep that in mind, you would want to watch for that. So you may think, oh, that's a really nice bright spot. Well, it would be too bright. You'd be better off with the full spectrum lights as mentioned. Okay, so the uh, keeping this guy should be uh, not soggy soil in terms of watering, not soggy soil, but best not to let it dry out completely. Anytime you're wondering about watering for plants, think of their native origins, okay? So um, this one, uh, as mentioned, native to Mexico, Guatemala, it is, uh, really needing that moisture, right? You're in the different climates like that that have a lot of humidity and moisture. So in that respect, 
plants from those various areas are not going to want to dry out completely like some plants. So that's why a lot of times I will say when the plant is approaching dryness and on the moisture meter scale, and I have a video on using them, you would want to be around the four where you're thinking, okay, if I wait another day or two, it's going to be in the three, which is dry. So around the four, it's still a little bit moist. It could be even between four and five. It's still a little bit moist. It's not dried out all the way, but it's not soggy. Then you want to water, water with warm to tepid water. Uh, you want to water all your house plants with warm to tepid water, and I do have a video on doing that as well, that, and why. Uh, and especially for tropical plants like this, because they, are, they come from the tropics where the, the, the climate is, is milder than, say, you turning on your faucet and it's 30 degree cold water. So warm up the, the water before using it, let it sit to room temperature. Um, I will even add some hot water into my cold water to make it warm water. So do whatever you need to do to make it a nice warm temperature for the plants. You do want to pinch them back once they start, if, once they, if you want to keep them bushy, say for just sitting in a pot on a table, you would want to pinch them back. You would pinch the middle two leaves in, in here right down to the, the second set of leaves. Pinch them off with your fingers. You can also use pruners. That will create more leaves, more leaf couplets to come out from that one particular area and make the plant bushier. However, if you want the plant to spill, then you're going to just let it, go ahead and just let it grow. And at that point, if it does get a little bit rangy at some point, then you can do what I just suggested, which pinching off leaves to the next set of leaves. And then what will happen is you will create more branching at the end of the branches. But initially, you would want to let it spill and grow to get that trailing effect. So that is that for the pruning. Now, the uh, fertilizing, do you, they, they like, they're not really, really heavy feeders, but they do like some feeding. The feeding, the fertilizing is going to cause them to grow more readily for you and, the, and them to be nice and healthy. So do fertilize every month or so. You can use a granular fertilizer. I have a uh, houseplant fertilizer. I'll put the link below. You can also use a liquid fertilizer. Whatever fertilizer you do use, use an organic fertilizer so you don't burn the plant roots. They have very, they do have delicate plant roots like a lot of house plants do, especially the very tropical ones. So uh, use a use a organic fertilizer that that is the be your best choice. And if you, and you can all, and it's always best to err on the side of caution. So say the fertilizer says one teaspoon per quart or something. Go ahead and do a half a teaspoon per quart instead. Err on the side of caution. Uh, the plant will get everything it needs from that and you won't burn any plant roots. Once you burn plant roots, then it causes dieback, then it, with the dieback, it can lead to root rot and you just have a big mess going on. And also you'll have get salt burn, which shows as leaf tip burn. Uh, that is, an, I have another video on that and how to deal with that. So if you're having that problem and you're using uh, uh, chemical fertilizers, uh, and potting soils filled with chemical fertilizers, those will all cause those sorts of problems. And this guy is very sensitive to all of that. The, they do like some humidity. So if you, if, when they're hanging, you can't do that, provide that as easily. But if they're sitting on, uh, on a table, you can create a humidity tray. So for instance, this tray that it's in, filled with marbles or pebbles or gravel, and then you put soil, you put water to just below the surface of the marbles or pebbles or gravel. And then that water will then evaporate, and as it's evaporating, it will humidify the plant. So that's a possibility as well to keep them humidified. Signs of low humidity can be the, the crispy leaves, crispy edges of the leaves, some leaf drop, so that is a possibility, especially if you live in a very dry climate. If you live in a more humid climate, you probably won't have to worry about this as much. So any pests or diseases on these guys, they can sometimes get mealy bugs. Uh, so you want to keep an eye on that. And if 
you do see spider mites. Spider mites like very dry conditions. So if you're getting spider mites, it, it's very well could be that your the plant isn't moist enough. But as mentioned, don't over moisten things. Uh, uh, misting does help with that. So. And then uh, keeping in mind too, the healthier plant is, the more likely it will be to ward off pests and diseases. If you do get them, especially mealybugs, I have some videos on that as well, then uh, do treat them obviously. Uh, but generally speaking, they're pretty hardy plants that don't, don't have a lot of pests and disease problems as long as you're growing them correctly. So that is it for growing this beautiful zebrina plant. Thank you for stopping by today. Please leave any comments about any indoor gardening tutorials you'd like to see. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video. And please check the bell if you'd like to be notified when new videos are released.